This episode is rated O for Out of Control. Welcome to another episode of The O Show. I'm O and I'm here for your amusement. And I have a special guest. Hi, I'm Peter. Nice to see you guys again. It's been a while. Hey, hey, hey. So, me and Peter just saw an interesting movie. Very interesting movie. <laughs> um, so some of you may or may not know of a quite scandalous movie, I may mm-hmm. say. Do I have the right box? Well, hold on, y'all. Yeah. There we go. All right. We are talking about Solo, or the 120 Days of Sodom. Mm-hmm. And, um, Peter, what the hell did we watch? Well, <laughs> it's just recently come out in its entirety after being made like 40 years ago or something. Yes, you guys. Yeah. Like, it is a deluxe, like, there's a booklet, they expect oh, me to yeah. read all this. Yeah. <laughs> it's interesting. It's interesting. It's based on a book. Written by the Marquis du Sade uh, when he was imprisoned in the Bastille in like the late 18th century during what was it, Reign of Terror? I don't know. One, one of those French history. What, whenever Bastille Day happened, that's when he wrote it. And they thought that they had lost the book, but it turned out that, yeah, they didn't. And mm. then this director dude made a movie based on it. So. Yeah. <laughs> and then the movie came out in 19, like 75. Mm hmm couple countries and as soon as it was released in theaters the shit was banned from theaters yes. <laughs> and that's actually how I found this movie uh, thank you YouTube for your mini list of top 10 movies banned <laughs> from the United States around the country this movie showed up so of course me I'm like what I wonder if I can find this movie <laughs> and now I have second thoughts watching this movie <laughs> because I feel like the FBI are outside my house right now. <laughs> nice, nice. Well, I first heard about this movie back in like 2007 or 2008. My, um, our, our friend Lenny um, told me about a production of Ricard Strauss's Salome. I think that was being presented in Europe. I don't know which opera house. But they based the set design on the film and Lenny's like, Peter, you have to watch this movie. You have to watch this version of the opera and you have to watch 100 Days of Solo or 120 Days, 120 Days, 120 120 days, days of Solo. And I'm like, okay. So at that time I got like an illegal download and it was hard to do like back in like early I'm sure. 2000 or like, uh-huh. yeah, whatever. And um, the version I saw, it turns out that it's the UK edit because there was a lot of scenes, particularly the scenes depicting homosexual relationships, that were taken out of that. And then there's there's another scene in there, Orpheus will sure as hell to tell you about it and stuff, but they, they got rid of that scene as well in there. Well, a lot of the graphic part of that scene and everything, so, mm-hmm. but yeah. So there, I think that this version that came out is the most complete, unedited, uncut, like, director's version and everything. Yes. Before he died. So. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And meaning, like, when this movie was released, the director was killed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> don't know why, though. Um, don't know if it's because he made the movie. It was a coincidence, but... All right, so... <laughs> So, Solo. Let's try to talk about this movie the best we can. <laughs> mm-hmm. So we have these four men who are pretty much the lead throughout this whole movie. And uh, the men are... Uh, the Duke, the Bishop, the Magistrate, and the President. And they're all supposed to represent high-ranking officials in a society. Yes. So what they are doing is they are going around and kidnapping young men and women. Mm-hmm. Now the movie starts off with the three are actually marrying each other's daughters yes. to themselves. Yes. <laughs> They're like, hey, you marry my daughter, I marry your daughter, you marry that daughter, you marry that yeah. daughter. To, to secure the deal. Oh. Yes. yes. So after that is done, they are pretty much putting these 
I assume teenagers. I'm going to say they're mm-hmm. teenagers. Uh, through four months of fucking hell. Yes. <laughs> nine females, nine males. Yes. And they even... Now the, the daughters are even part of the torture because mm-hmm. they're pretty much new through the whole movie and serving yes. just everyone. And abused. And abused. Oh, yes. Oh, gosh. Yeah. So we got... There's, there's certain rules they gotta follow, but pretty much the movie's broken up into into th- four parts. You got your beginning, like the introduction of what's happening. You have your middle, where they say every morning you dress up. Um, they have these prostitutes that tell stories every day. Uh, yeah. Things may or may not happen during these stories, but um, they're doing that. The third section is... Uh, the part that got cut out in the version that Peter saw that involves mm-hmm. a lot of poop. Mm-hmm. I'm just gonna say I'm just gonna leave it. Just leave it there. <laughs> poop. <Yeah. laughs> exactly. The version I saw did have the stories about the poop, but it didn't show le poop. The poop. Le poop in the movies. <laughs> And people who may or may not be sitting in it, and people that may or may not be eating it. And thank God in this movie that the poop was made out of chocolate and orange marmalade. It says it in Wikipedia. Okay. <laughs> oh my gosh. And then the fourth section of the movie is pretty much the four gentlemen. Now they have decided after all this time what boys and women they're going to keep. And who are they? They just don't need anymore. Mm-hmm. And it's not just like go back to your families. No. <laughs> no, each one takes a turn sitting like on a throne, looking out a, w- a window with binoculars, just watching torture, murder, mm-hmm. rape. Yeah, happening outside to all the people who are like, no, you go. Mm-hmm. And uh, we get a bit of an interesting ending, and then movie's over. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of like, you know, all this happened. Yeah, because at the end, it's two soldiers in a room dancing. Mm -hmm. And the one asks, like, well, what's your girlfriend's name? And he's like, Marguerite. And it ends. But, you know, it's just supposed to show, like, the blasé attitude and everything, you know. And, you know, like, and how, in my opinion, what it was is the powerful yielding their power on the lower class and everything and it's supposed to represent a fascist regime and everything this is supposed to be Italy World War II and everything so it's supposed to be that time Um, if you look in there there's a lot of like impressionist paintings art deco design in here it's it's supposed to represent like very affluent wealthy The, the, the nine people which become eight men and women or boys and girls or whatever um they're from like the lower rungs of society. Um, the one thing that we did forget to mention is they have four guards that are known as the studs, <laughs> and they're basically what stud horses are supposed to be. You know, they'll just do whatever they want. You know, and Crazy. yeah, and everything. <laughs> but it's it's supposed to, it's supposed to show how absolute power can degrade your mind and just you know make you make people forced to have undesirable sex acts with each other and you know against their will and everything and then take it a step further and do things with fluids and stuff of that nature and then the next thing is basically necro Thelia, necromancy, stuff. well, not necromancy, it's a necronomy, oh, oh, yes. but you know, just like, like you know, like, like death and stuff. So it, it's basically like a snuff film at the end. So can you say snuff film on YouTube? You can block me out, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> I think we can. Okay. I, I just can't yeah. show it. Okay, sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I'm going to go there, y'all, because <laughs> like Peter said, you got the people who are wealthy and think they can just do anything. And then I did, for at one little point, I was like, damn, this is kind of relevant today because when you think about it <laughs> if you see this movie now I'm not telling y'all to go out and, and run to watch this mm-hmm. movie like y'all need to really have a stomach <laughs> to sit through mm-hmm. how long was this? Was this thing like three hours? No, it was like two hours. Was it two hours? <laughs> Don't you hate me that much. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it, was, it was like three hours. I'm joking. a shitload of stuff happening. Yeah. 
But, you know, I, I couldn't help but to think, like, you got your little R. Kelly's, like, you got your P. Diddy. <laughs> just, like, people in power getting yeah. away with shit, thinking they could just walk away and not have any consequences until the yeah. stuff comes to light. Yeah. And uh, I was like, well, damn, like, this stuff is still happening today. So, you know absolutely. what? I, this movie is really relevant. Yeah. <laughs> so right now. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, that's that's, that's yeah. fucked up. And not just with entertainers, like our actual politicians. Look at how many people... Look what just happened with our ex forty fifth president and stuff. Oh God. God. Okay, well we're no politics. That matters. But, like, but you know it, it happens. You know it's it's the whole idea that a little power will make you corrupt and everything and, and all of that. So yeah. and then inflict your uh, ide- ideolo- ideologies and beliefs and sexual perversions on other people, even if they don't want to do it. You know. So yep. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. I will not eat chocolate ice cream for another week now. <laughs> uh, I can't eat brownies right now, but I think I'm going to uh, turn my head to brownies, too, because everything that just resembles what happened on that floor. <laughs> Absolutely. It's craziness. So, yeah, you guys, I might, um, I may have Peter eat this, because I don't know what's happening inside this book. Absolutely. <laughs> maybe I'll maybe even make a little YouTube video about it. There we go. We'll have a follow-up. Exactly. On Wish, and then Solo after that, right? <laughs> <laughs> Those are my only two videos, right? <laughs> So you guys, let me know if you've seen Solo. Uh, have you heard of it? Again, don't. I do not recommend right now. <laughs> mm-hmm. I actually got... I'm not even going to tell you how much I spent on this movie, but um, it's, it's like a collector's item now. Like, people are really, like... You want it, you gotta pay for it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yes, let me know in the comments if you ever seen this movie. Have you heard of this movie? Um, I am not going to do a shot rating of this movie because <laughs> I don't know. What you know what are in the shot glasses? <laughs> I don't lose any of y'all who watch my shows. <laughs> Thinking, what the hell is this guy doing? But anyway, um, yeah. Anything else? Um, I side note, I'm very impressed. Um, I was one of Fer- Orpheus's first um, special guests, and his setup has like totally improved over like the last two years. Oh my god, I'm it's not an fantastic. amateur no more. No, it's fantastic. <laughs> He's got like the lights and stuff. I'm like, whoa, this is <laughs> awesome, you know. So, but yeah, that's yeah. The other thing I was gonna say is this movie is like on every single list of like the most disturbing films ever. Like, if you type in top ten most disturbing films of all time, this will be there in, like, three or four or whatever. Number three, number four, if not number one, so. Yep. Up there with dang Human Centipede. That might... I may need to do the Human Centipede reviews maybe on Halloween. Ooh, okay. Because those are some messed up movies. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> this, this is on par with Human Centipede number two. Ooh, okay? Yeah. That's all. Maybe they got some ideology or some... Uh, Ideas from it, you know. So I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure it was inspired somebody. Exactly. Like <laughs> you know, the other thing too is it reminds me of the first Hostel. Not so much like the actions, but like you know, like the grittiness. But, yeah. You know, it's just a very gritty movie. Um, very little talking in it, you know. But what's said is very poignant and very. Um, important, like one one of the scenes, uh, the, the last scene, the the awful scene with the, mm-hmm. with the people getting injured. There's uh, they use one of the songs from Carmina Burana by Orf, and Orf, oh my god, <laughs> yeah. Um, and anyways, it's 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 a it's a song about springtime and the happiness in spring, and you know the jubilation and this and that. And here are people getting tortured while the bourgeoisie libertines mm. are getting off to it in the house you know it's very it's crazy juxtaposition <laughs> whatever so so he's ever right I don't know we, it counts today exactly exactly <laughs> so but thank you for letting me watch this and uh, talk about it Orpheus. yes thank you this. for watching it with me so I have a witness yeah. Um. <laughs> and thank God I was holding Fifi the whole time. I'm like, don't go, don't watch this, don't watch this, puppy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right, you guys. So please like this video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I will see you all in the next episode. So until then, TTFN. Yay. <laughs>